Hey guys, welcome back to the 30 day wedding photography crash course series. I am Josiah Blizzard and we're going to jump into my culling and editing workflow today. It's really, really simple. Um, don't be intimidated by this. There's a thousand different ways to, to go about doing this. Uh, the two softwares that we use for culling our photos and editing our photos is Photo Mechanic and Lightroom. You can download Photo Mechanic at um, a site called camerabits.com. I'll leave that in the description below. It's about $150. Uh, and I believe that it is completely worth your investment and time. I have loved using this software and it is, it's just amazing to use because it, it speeds up my workflow times 10, like maybe more than that, because Lightroom just kind of drags when you're selecting photos. So I will show you this in just a second. The first thing I want to show you is our folder structure. Okay. For when we dump our when we dump our raw files, we need a place to put them. So we have this massive hard drive and right up here in the top right is this folder called J and A raw, John and Amy raw. And we've already shot their wedding, edited their wedding and all that. So I'm just going to create a folder underneath their main folder here. Actually, you know what? We'll create an example folder. How about that? So they're John and Amy, 14 John and Amy. What we do, let's say this is some other random person. We'll create a new folder and we'll just label it 15 and let's do Kevin and Jenna, random, random names in there. We have, we're going to make three folders. The first is going to be edited. The second is going to be tagged and the third is going to be unedited. Okay. Those are the three folders we're going to make. I've already created a template folder. So what I normally do when I am dumping these photos, I just copy this template folder and inside it has those three folders already listed. Uh, so you don't have to create those three folders every single time. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to drag the J and a raw into the unedited folder. All right. So all of your photos are transferred onto your hard drive. We've gone over backups and redundancies in a previous episode. If you're still unsure about how to back up your photos, go check that video out. I've linked it in the cards here. So your photos are dumped onto the hard drive. Okay. Now it's time to start selecting your photos to start culling through and selecting the ones you want to keep. So this is photo mechanic. It does look a little overwhelming potentially if you've never used this, I promise it's really simple. I like to use every software in the most simple way possible because a lot of these softwares can do a whole lot of crazy things. I keep it really simple. We're going to go into our hard drive. My hard drive is labeled Josiah and Steph photography. Click the drop down arrow. It's 2019. We're editing a wedding. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom, Kevin and Jenna. All right. Hit the drop down arrow one more time. We're going into the unedited images, J and a raw. You can see now if I hit the drop down, there's nothing that happens over here. But if I double click the folder, all right, so this is photo mechanic. It's very, very simple to use. Uh, I've only imported a few photos because if you were to watch me select photos from their entire wedding, that would be torturous and I would never wish that upon you. So what we're going to do is we're just going to select a few out of this. Uh, it looks like 58 photos. We're going to select only a few of the 58 photos here and I will show you how I transfer them into Lightroom and my whole process. So the first thing you're going to do is click on the first photo. And the one reason I really like photo mechanic is because we can go through and all of their photos are fully rendered already. It's, it's taking the preview JPEG files and making it so that you can cull really, really quickly without any, any rendering. Lightroom used to take forever to just unpixelate and render the full image out so I can tell if people's eyes are open or closed or if I'm out of focus. This does all of that for you and it makes your process uh, 10 times faster. So. The way we go about this is we hit the up and down key just to go through. If we want to go down to the next photo, hit the down key. Want to go back to a previous photo, hit the up key. You can also do this with the left and right arrow keys. Just depends on whatever floats your boat. So let's go all the way back to the top to select a photo. We want to hit T. You can see in the bottom right that that check mark is going on and off. T is selected or tagged and hitting it again untags it. All right. So we're going to tag this one. We're going to go next. We're going to tag that one. And I'm just going to go through and tag a few here and you'll see what I come up with when we, when we go to transfer these photos. And while I'm going through, you can see that I often will go to the next photo and then I'll go back to the previous one 
Uh, sometimes it just helps me know uh, if if the one I selected is the best photo, especially if there's two people, uh, two of the same people back to back. I can kind of compare the photos together and see which one is the best one to select. So we've gone through, we've selected all of our photos. Now we want to we want to move only the ones we've tagged to this tagged bin, right? So how do we do that? Well, we're going to go up to the top. You see where it says all we're going to click on that drop down and hit tagged and the 58 has now turned into the 33. We're going to move all of these over to the tagged bin so we can hit command A if you're on a Mac or control A if you're on Windows and we're just going to drag these photos into the tagged folder. Perfect. So we're physically moving them. We're not copying them. We're physically moving these photos to the tagged bin. All right. This ends up saving you space on your hard drive. You're not copying photos. You know, it, it, it takes up a lot of room when you shoot 3,000 photos. And then if you're copying part of that over to another bin, it just, that's a lot of hard drive space. So now you can see if we clicked on these, this tagged folder bin here, that all of the tagged photos that we just selected should show up here. Awesome. And they did. So this is it for Photo Mechanic. We're going to quit out of Photo Mechanic here. It's that simple, guys. It's really, really quick and easy. Once you start practicing and figuring out how to use this, um, it goes it goes pretty quick. So let's open up Lightroom. All right, we have our new catalog open. We want to import these photos, right? So go up to File, Import Photos and Video. We're only going to be importing photos. Uh, make sure that you have Copy at the top here. Make sure you have Copy selected, not Copy as DNG, Move or Add, only Copy very important step or some things might happen to your files. Now we want to go find the folder structure. So go to homes. For me, I'm going to go to homes, design and step photography 2019. I'm going to find where I left that tagged folder, Kevin and Jenna. And then I'm going to click on tagged. All of the photos should appear here. Perfect. If I am editing an entire wedding, then I will actually click build smart previews. This will make my render files and my editing uh, go much quicker because it won't be previewing the entire large, you know, 6,000 by 4,000 file size. It's going to be uh, showing me only a smaller version of that. That way I can edit quicker. Don't import selected duplicates. If you want to add some keywords, you can do that. And if you want to add a preset upon import, you can also do that. But I, I decide not to most of the time. It just depends on the photographer, what they're doing. So we'll click import. All right, all of our files are in Lightroom now, and we're going to head over to the develop module. You can also uh, hit K on your keyboard, and that will take you to the develop module. And once we're here, editing is, you know, it's up to you on how you want to edit these images. Uh, we have a certain style of editing. Other people have different styles. Obviously, I do have another video coming out, you know, in the next couple of days here on how to edit photos pretty quickly and uh, and that sort of thing. So I'm just going to I'm just going to fly through this real quick and speed up this process. Alright, so I have edited all of these photos. Sorry I didn't show you the editing. You can see it's just sped up. All of the photos are done. Now we want to export these photos out. And the best way to do that, and the way I do that, is I just hit Command A. And then I right click after they're all selected, and I go to Export. Hit Export here. And then after you're at this window, I'm exporting 32 files out. I'm going to change the file name to the couple's name. We've named them Kevin and Jenna. So Kevin and Jenna is what I'm going to export. Start number at one. My custom settings here, uh, it's, it's custom setting, rename to custom setting. Um, file settings, JPEG, sRGB. I do quality at 84. This makes um, it still high res images and it is easier and quicker for me to upload to our gallery service, which we'll cover in a, in a later video. And then output sharpening, sharpen for screen, mount high, um, all metadata, I remove person info, remove location info, uh, and that's it, that's how, that's what I do. That's my uh, export settings. And then I hit export, and it's gonna bring up a place for me to uh, save them to. So we'll find the appropriate folder, which is under the Kevin and Jenna folder and edited here. And I change this depending on where this is going. So if this is going to go to a gallery, then I'll say gallery. If it's going to go, if these are blog images, then I'll label them blog or maybe favorites actually. 
um, and that should actually be outside of the gallery folder so just pretend I didn't do that favorites there we go so let's say these are my favorites and then I'm gonna hit open and you can see the top left it's exporting out 32 files so that's really all it is um, this entire process is what I do every single time doesn't matter if I'm editing a headshot session that is only like 50 images or if I'm editing a full wedding that is 1050 images or 2050 images, whatever this is the same process that I do every single time so uh, you can follow these same steps download uh, photo mechanic download photo mechanic and uh, I promise it'll be worth the money it'll save you time in the long run when you are culling and selecting your photos something that we recently started doing was uh, selecting photos at the reception during the uh, during the wedding day and that means by the end of the reception I have selected all of the photos that I need for editing and then when I get back home all I'm doing is going through those photos and editing them and it makes the makes the process a little bit easier and I'm starting off um, on the edit rather than selecting the photos and then by the time I get to the edit I'm already tired because I've selected the photos for an hour already at that point so uh, your process is going to be your process so I, I encourage you to make this this entire workflow your own change it up figure out different ways of doing things and and figure out what works best for you and your business just because I do something one way doesn't mean you have to do it the same exact way so I hope this was helpful guys please please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already if you guys are watching this um, I would love for you guys to uh, take a screenshot on your phone and share it to Instagram stories or something like that and you can tag me at Josiah Blizzard I'd love to see if you guys are watching this um, and other than that, share this content with a friend who might find it valuable and I will see you guys in the next video.